Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. It's time for the September edition to our 2019 Folk Art Calendar Blanket. And since it's late summer and the weather is still really nice, we thought we'd spend a little bit more time down by the seashore. This month we're going to make a sailboat. It's a tall ship or a schooner. Any way you want to look at it, it's an ocean-going vessel with sails. Sailing ships and sailboats and boats with large sails have existed for a long time in just about all four corners of the planet. So we thought this would be a nice addition to the blanket. Today we're going to show you how to make the hull, both the sails and the flag. And of course you can make them in any color you want because sailboats come in every possible color imaginable. <laughs> you can also leave your sails plain or you can dress them up a little bit. I added a star to my big sail and we'll also link a few small tutorials for small appliques in the description box down below if you want to experiment with a couple of little decorations for your sail. You can also consider doing a bit of embroidery or if you're into that because the back of the sail won't show. It's going to be sewn down to the blanket so it can be as messy as it needs to be. <laughs> so. Let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll grab our calendar blankets, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a sailboat together. In order to make our sailboat applique, we're using the same yarn we've been using all along for the rest of our blanket. In my case, that is a size 4, medium weight, 100% acrylic yarn. For the main part of your boat, and of course you can make it any color, I've chosen a nice light brown today, you want approximately 20 yards or around 10 grams, so not very much. For your two sails, and again you can make these any color you want, but I've chosen white, you want around 90 yards or 40 grams, and that's sort of an overestimate, but you'd rather have too much than too little. And of course for our little tiny flag you don't need very much at all, just a small amount, possibly a little less than 10 yards of your chosen yarn for the flag. And remember, of course, you want to have leftovers so that you can sew your pieces on. If you want to add a little applique, we'll have a list of appliques that would fit neatly into the large sail listed in our description box down below. This is a little tiny star. I've used this in other places here on the blanket. We'll make sure you can see that too if you want to add a star to it. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using is the same one we've been using all along, a size 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure you click that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. We're going to begin with the main part of our boat or the bottom of it, the hull, <laughs> and you want to choose your hull color. We're going to begin with a slip knot and we're going to chain 14 to begin. We're using the half double crochet stitch we're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the second one, and work two half double crochet into it. So we want to create a nice curving part to both ends of our boat, and we're going to get that by working two stitches into the last stitch of each row as we go along. So two half double crochet into the second chain from the hook. We're going to half double crochet now into each chain all the way across until we get to the last chain, and we're going to work two half double crochet into the last chain as well. When you get all the way across to the last chain, you're going to work two half double crochet into that last chain. So you'll have 15 half double crochet in total across this row. Chain one and turn. We're going to work two half double crochet into the first stitch. You're going to half double crochet all the way across and work two half double crochet into the last stitch. When you get across to the last stitch, remember sometimes it can be kind of sort of 
pulling down on the side, so make sure you sort of find it there. You want to work two half double crochet into that last stitch. You'll have 17 stitches all the way across for row two. You're going to chain one, turn, and repeat that last row. So two half double crochet worked into the first stitch, half double crochet in each stitch across, work two half double crochet into the last stitch. You'll have 19 stitches at the end of row three. At the end of row three, you'll have 19 stitches. You want to fasten off, leave a long tail because you're going to use this tail to sew the hull of your watercraft onto your blanket. Make that a nice tight knot. And you can take a moment to sort of pull the ends of your boat up into a hull looking shape. You should have something that looks a little bit like that. Take a moment to weave that short tail in back and forth across some of the stitches of row one. The next thing we're gonna do is our small sail and we're gonna to switch to the double crochet stitch now. We're gonna take our sail color, I'm using white. We're gonna begin with a slip knot and we're going to chain 10 to begin. Once you have 10 chains, we're going to skip the first two chains and double crochet into the third chain from the hook. We're going to double crochet all the way back to the very first chain we made. And we'll have nine stitches in total. The chain two that we use at each end of every row throughout both of our sails will count as a double crochet. The end of your first row, including the chain two that sort of sits at the very beginning, you'll have nine stitches, so eight double crochet plus a chain two. Chain two and turn. I want you to keep track of your little short tail, and if it helps, you can put a stitch marker down here. You just want to keep an eye on this side of your sail, because this side of your sail is going to become the part that is always straight. The other side is going to end up becoming sort of curved. So the side with your short tail is the straight side. This is the side that we always work into the top of our chain to, and the other side we always skip it, but I'll get there <laughs> when we get there. So chain two to begin, we're going to work a double crochet into each stitch. Now remember, because our chain two counts, you're not going to use that first stitch. See my fingers on it there? The chain two counts as a double crochet, and therefore that stitch has been accounted for. So we start our real double crochet in the stitch next to it. You're going to double crochet in each stitch across, but you're not going to double crochet into the top of the chain two on the non-short tail side. Including your turning chain, you should have eight stitches. We are not using the top of the chain two. So here's the little chain two. We're not going to use that. We're just working a double crochet into the last real stitch. And that is the non short tail side or the side that isn't marked. So I'm using my little short tail as a marked side. So we skip the top of the chain two, chain two, turn our work. Chain two counts as a double crochet. So you skip that first stitch work a double crochet into the next stitch and in each stitch across. And when we get back to the short tail side, we will double crochet into the top of the chain two. Here we are all the way back to the short tail side. There's the chain two. That does count as a double crochet, but we are also going to work a double crochet into the top of it. So just stick your hook through the top of that chain two and double crochet into it. You'll still have eight stitches, including the chain two, all the way across your third row. Chain two and turn. We're now heading back across to the non-short tail row. So you're gonna double crochet into each stitch, but remember, skip that first one because it's already accounted for. Work a double crochet into every single stitch except the top of the chain two. So you'll have seven stitches, including the chain two at the beginning of this row when you get across to the end. That's seven stitches, including the chain two. We're not working a double crochet into the top of that chain two because this is not the short tail side. So we only do that on the short tail side. Chain two, turn your work, skip that first stitch, double crochet into every single stitch across, including the top of the chain two, 
because when you get back to the end, you'll be on the short tail side. And we always double crochet into the top of the chain two on the short tail side. And that's so we get this sort of shape going. On the short tail side, you make sure you work a double crochet into the top of the chain two. On the non-short tail side, you skip it entirely. Every row, you chain two and turn. Always skip that first stitch because it's accounted for and double crochet once into each stitch all the way across. Every two rows, your stitch count will decrease by one. So every two rows, the row that you work across to the non-short tail side, so this side here, you're going to decrease by one stitch because you're not working a double crochet into the top of that chain two. So I'm just coming up on it. There's my last real double crochet. There's my chain two, but it's not the short tail side, so I'm skipping it. Chain two and turn. And I'm going to work all the way back across, but I am going to work into the top of my chain two because it's the short tail side. You're going to continue this pattern until you've reached 13 rows in total. You'll have three stitches left, and that it does include your chain two. And I'll see you at the end of row 13. At the end of row 13, you'll have three stitches left. That includes the chain two that began the row, and your last stitch was built into the top of a chain two because you finished on a short tail side. So there is your small sail. You want to leave a nice long tail, long, 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 long tail, because you want to be able to sew the whole thing down to your blanket with it. Fasten off and take a moment to weave that short tail in. We don't need to see it anymore. We're gonna build our large sail now. So you still wanna to stick to your sail color. For me, that's white. And our large sail is built exactly the same way as our small sail. It just has more stitches in it. So we're gonna chain 12 to begin. Once you have 12 chains, you're gonna skip the first two, find the third one, double crochet into it. You're gonna double crochet into each chain all the way back across. You're gonna chain two and turn. You're always gonna skip that first stitch because the chain two counts as a double crochet, so that first stitch is accounted for. You're gonna crochet all the way across to the non-short tail end. When you get to a non-short tail side, you skip the top of the chain two. So you don't want to work a double crochet into the top of a chain two on a non-short tail side. So just like we built for the first sail, only this one's going to be bigger and taller. So at the end of your first row, you'll have 11 stitches, including your chain two. Every other row, so every two rows, this next row you're going to be decreasing by one because you're going to chain two have to, or should say double crochet all the way across, but you're not gonna work into the top of your chain two, so you'll be down to 10. But then every two rows from there on out, you're going to be decreasing by one. So if you need a refresher, just head back to the small sail and work exactly the same pattern as for the small sail, but you're just going to have, you're gonna start with a few more rows. This is going to work all the way until row 17 so it's the same pattern, but now there's 17 rows. You're also going to end with three stitches. So it'll include the chain two, but at the end of row 17, you'll be down to three stitches and you're making your big sail now. So exactly same pattern, follow the same pattern as the small sail. Remember on a non short tail side, don't double crochet into the top of the chain two. There it is. Just chain two, turn, work all the way back across, and on a short tail side, you do work a double crochet into the top of the chain two. I'll see you at the end of row 17. At the end of row 17, you should be down to three stitches, just like you were for the first sail. So for the small sail, you end with three stitches. For the large sail, you end with three stitches. Cut yourself a nice long tail, long, 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 long. Fasten off. Now 
And then that is your large sail. You can take a moment to weave your short tail in across the other side of your sail. Now we want to make the little flag that sits at the top of the large sail. So you can grab your little flag color. I'm using red. We're going to start with a slip knot and we're going to chain 11. We're going to make the whole flag in one row. So after you have 11 chains, we're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the second one and slip stitch into it. We're going to slip stitch into the next chain. We're going to single crochet into the next two chains. We're going to half double crochet into the next three chains. And we're going to double crochet into the last three chains. Cut yourself a nice long tail, if you haven't already got <laughs> one there. Fasten off. And then you can take a moment to weave that short tail in across the backs of some of those stitches. We've got all of our pieces now. If you want to add something like a little decal or a decoration to your large sail, then feel free to go ahead and make that. Like I said, we've got some links to small little appliques you can try out in the description box down below. You want to go ahead and sew that on to your large sail, and it doesn't have to be neat and tidy. Look at this sort of bit of a schmozzle at the back. It's all right, because that is not going to show. This will be sewn down in total to your blanket. So if you are going to add a little applique, go ahead, make that up, and add it now. It's time to add our applique to our blanket. So for positioning, I just wanted to show you, I've got the blanket folded so that we can see the top of sort of the edge of the ocean. There's our um, lighthouse close to the one edge. I want to go all the way across, and I'm just gonna sort of roll it up here to almost the other side. So here's the other edge. I want to add my great big cruising sailboat to the middle left, so not quite in the middle, a little towards the left of my blanket. Our sailboat is quite tall, so you want to make sure you get all of your pieces sort of positioned where you want them before you sew them down, just like all the other pieces we've done. I have the bottom of my boat two rows up from the bottom edge of my blanket, and when I position my sails, the top of my big sail and my flag overlap into sort of the edge of the ocean where the ocean meets the rest of the earth. So it's very, very tall. I also want to slightly curve my small uh, sail so that I have sort of the illusion of a little bit of wind in the sail. Um, so I don't want it to be completely straight up and down, but I do want the top to sort of reach the side, sort of connect with the large sail. So take a moment to just sort of take all of your pieces, lay them out, stretch them into shape, make sure they're exactly where you want them to be, pin them into place if you feel it's necessary, and then you can go ahead and start sewing them down. I'm going to start with the bottom here. Like every other piece we've sewn on, we want to use the top facing loops of the blanket stitch, or the blanket stitches, and the corresponding side piece or edge piece of the applique we're sewing on. And you want to just pause every so often, reposition your piece if you didn't pin it down. Even if you did pin it down, you want to make sure you're not sort of going off on some funny angle. And then just pick up the next top facing loop of a blanket stitch that is pretty much directly below the stitch you want to, or the piece, the edge side of your applique piece. So if you're using the pieces that run directly beneath it, your stitches won't show. They'll be really, really thin and small. So go ahead, work around the edges of every single one of your applique pieces. And when you get back to the end, make a small knot 
and you can weave your little tails in to the rest of your applique. Once you've sewn on the hull, I recommend you sew down your pieces in this order. Large sail, small sail, flag. That way you can position your large sail where you want it, position your small sail so that it's touching your large sail, and then your flag can go on at the very end. And there you go, a sailboat. I love how this came out. I love how tall it is. And of course, like all the other appliques we've made for this blanket, you can use it for other projects too. So go crazy. <laughs> I love that this hull can be different colors. I like the idea that you can maybe write little names across the bottom of it. You know how sort of boats often have a name or a title? You can do a little bit of tiny embroidery with thread or embroidery floss if you wanted to. It's your boat, so have fun. And that's it! We hope you enjoyed stitching up this little sailboat along with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week. <laughs> Bye, everybody! Hi, everybody! Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.